this video tutorial, we will be exploring the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. We're going to be using an activity originally prepared by Dr. Welty, and that's right here. The tool that's going to allow us to be able to compare the nucleotide sequence of the virus with some other common viruses um, will be through this website here, the National Library of Medicine. We'll be collecting all the data in this Google Doc down here. Library of Medicine hosts the National Center for Biotechnology Information, which are powerful research tools that anyone can use, from the COVID-19 researchers to you. We will be using two biotechnology information tools in this exploration. The first tool is a basic local alignment sequence tool, also known as BLAST, which compares two types of sequences. The second tool will generate phylogenetic trees to compare multiple sequences. Through this exploration, we will be able to determine which virus most likely mutated into the novel COVID-19. In this exploration, we will complete the following tasks. First, we're going to find the closest matching animal sequence. Then, using GLASS, we're going to compare the nucleotide sequences of COVID-19, SARS, bat SARS, and bat coronavirus. Third, we're going to perform GLASS comparisons between the RNA polymerase enzyme of each of these viruses. Fourth, we're going to compare the spike protein found in the viruses. And then lastly, we're going to construct a phylogenetic tree between the four viruses. In task one, we're going to find the closest matching animal virus. The first step we're going to do is we're going to access the National Center for Biotechnology Information using this website here. So we're just going to copy and paste it into a new web browser. Once we've accessed the site, we want to scroll down until we see the BLAST link. From here, we want to select Nucleotide BLAST. Now, we want to be able to compare the COVID sequence, so we're going to use the accession number here. I'm just going to copy and paste that and pop that right into the query box. I want to give it a job title, so I'm going to copy and paste this job title here and pop it right into the job title box. That way we don't lose track of everything. Our tabs are going to get quite full at the top, so it's really important that you do have a label for these titles throughout. There's nothing else you need to do here. Just scroll all the way down until you find BLAST and BLAST away. This takes just a moment, and I'll pause for now. Once the sequence matches have been generated, you'll be able to scroll down and you see this very long list of all of the samples that have been isolated. And as you can see, many of these are in human. All of these here are in human, so these would be all of those that have been isolated and sequenced. And for the most part, we have a 99.99% match from the original strand that we are comparing. In some cases, a 100% match. So if we continue to scroll down, we'll find that the first non-human strand, or isolated and non-human, right here, is that in our bat coronavirus. And that's a 96.12% similarity. So based on our findings, you can import this information right into your data collection sheet. Now on to task two. We're going to be comparing using BLAST again the nucleotide sequences of the COVID-19, SARS, bat SARS, as well as bat coronavirus. For task two, we're going to open up another nucleotide BLAST window. We want to be able to compare two sequences here. So we're going to start with our original COVID-19 accession number copy and paste that there, and then we're going to select the SARS accession number, and we want to put that into a second box. Now this has already been set up, but you would need to select the align two or more sequences here, and the second accession box will open up for you. Copy and paste that there. Okay. It's also important to include our title, so I'm going to copy and paste a title. We're going to see shortly how many tabs are going to open up at the top of our screen here, so that's pretty important to have multiple tabs. And just before we're done, we hit BLAST, we want to open up another window so that way we can, we don't have to keep accessing a new window, so that'll open up. Okay, we'll hit BLAST, okay. and it looks like it's done. Now, we want to be able to see the alignment, and here we go. We can see our nucleotide sequence. Okay, so this is our original and our SARS. You're going to gather your identity percentages and your gap percentage and you'll place that right into our data collection tape. The next step is to 
look at the comparison between the COVID-19 and the bat size. So we've already had this new window opened up, so this one's all ready for us, ready to go. So we have our original accession number already put into the box. We're just going to scoop up the bat SARS accession number, copy paste it. Everything else should have been checked off. We just need to change our title now and hit blast. A new window will pop up. Again, you can see the two sequences set up side by side, and we have our percentages and our gap percentage. We can gather and import that data into our data collection sheet once again. Coronaviruses have several enzymes and capsid proteins coded for in their genome. The two proteins we are going to focus on are RNA replicase and the spike protein. These two proteins have different mutational rates based on their function. The replicase gene is quite large at 20,000 bases. It has a key function in transcribing vi viral RNA for transcription. So the hypothesis is that its structure will be more conserved. This conserved function is often seen with enzymes that interact with nucleic acid and nucleotides. On the other hand, Coronavirus spike proteins have up to five different receptor proteins used to induce endocytosis. Now recall from biology that endocytosis is the process by which particles are capable of entering inside of cells. And in the case of viruses, it's going to allow viruses to be able to enter inside of their host cells. Since coronavirus switch docking proteins on the host, it is hypothesized to have mutated and have less conserved amino acid sequence. We'll be using the BLAST for peptides to compare amino acid sequences in this activity. For task three, we're gonna open up another NCBI page, but this time we're going to select the protein BLAST. We will be performing a protein BLAST comparison between RNA replicase enzyme of COVID-19 against SARS, bat SARS, and bat coronavirus. We will be referring to the amino acid sequence provided here. So we'll select our COVID-19 amino acid sequence for the replicase, copy and paste it into the first query, and into our second, remember we have to select that line two or more sequences, we will copy and paste the SARS amino acid sequence. Now we can't forget our job title, so we'll have to go back and scoop that up. And we want to make sure that this will show up in a new window. And we'll hit last. We'll select the alignment. And here we have our identities, our percent identical, positive matches, as well as our gaps. So now going back to that original screen, we already have our COVID-19 RNA replicase amino acid sequence in the first box. So all we need to do is just simply copy and paste the second sequence, and we want to now work on the bat coronavirus. So again, referring to that resource, we'll copy and paste that into the last application. We need to change the title here. So now we're looking at, once all of our class have been completed for the RNA replicase amino acid sequence comparison, we can import our data into the data table collection sheet. In task four, we're going to be performing another protein blast very similar to what we had done for task three, but this time we're going to be looking at the spike protein. For task four, you will be performing the same exact procedure as you did for task three. However, you're going to utilize the amino acid sequence provided to you in the reference for the spike protein. In the video, I have simply sped up the process, but you certainly can slow it down if needed. is going to allow us to construct a phylogenetic tree between the COVID-19 SARS and the two bat sequences uh, of our conserved RNA replicase enzyme as well as the spike protein. So a phylogenetic tree is really just a way for us to compare different organisms, different species um, with each other to determine their relativity. Now the program that we're going to be using is this website called Methods and Algorithms of Bioinformatics. So utilizing that at that website, once we click on this site here, we're going to be entering in the provided spike protein uh, data set 
of the amino acid sequences that we saw earlier. And here is that data set. So we're gonna be copying and pasting this entire thing, all of it, including the little carrots here as well. So here's that site I was talking about earlier, the methods and algorithms of bioinformatics. So once you get to this site, you're gonna be brought right to that page from that link and you'll place your title coronavirus spike protein and you'll copy that entire sequence of so all four sequences from the different viruses. And then you'll just simply hit submit. And while you're waiting for this, you can also begin the next sequence. Now, one, one thing that you can do, which I didn't in this ex example, was you can actually place your uh, email address and you can have this sent directly to you so you can have a copy of it. So right here, it's generating our tree. And so here is our tree. So I'm just going to right click on this. And from here, it's going to allow me, I can then copy and paste it directly into my data sheet. Do the same thing here. So this was what I was, what I was talking to you about before. You can put your email address if you'd like to have it sent to you. So from each of these data sets, you can see that the COVID-19 is very similar to our bat coronavirus in both examples of the spike protein as well as the RNA replicates. So from here, you can draw your conclusions based on all of the evidence that we have gathered from the various exercises. Remember, these resources and tools are available to anyone. You just start by looking for your session number and gene sequences using GenBank. GenBank allows you to search multitudes of protein sequences. It'll, you'll get your session number from here as well. You plug in your values into the nucleotide BLAST. Compare your protein sequences using Protein BLAST. Then using the amino acid sequence, you can create a phylogenic tree to compare their evolutionary relationships among your organisms.